some poetry is my release. My shield from all grief, my refuge to which I retreat when this world is too much for me. Phrases on pages, language my mind speaks, metaphors and similes, poetic elements, I just breathe. See, phrases are written within me, my spirit on the page is free. I see my dreams, I build my fantasies, I'm the author of my own reality. Couplets and quatrains bleed free within my veins. Shh. Just listen to what my soul is saying. I conspire to inspire. Tie words that make you cry. Them bind lines and rhyme that are sure to make you smile. My pens indent white pages back and forth in smooth strokes. White paper comparable to Alicia Keys on the piano because poetry is my release. I use words and words use me. I am words and words are me. And to express them is my only dream because I will write. I will write when I'm tired, hungry, crying, or inspired, happy, sad, relaxed, or riled. I will write when I'm used, abused, and confused, whether or not I'm in the presence of my muse. I will write when I'm warm or cold or lonely and scolded, whether or not I have someone to hold me. I will grab an ink-filled picture that y'all's teachers call a fountain pen and pour out the lyrical liquid from my soul, because if I don't, I will explode. My hand is filled with heartfelt passion fruit that thirsty paper drinks like verbal vitamin-filled orange juice, because between blue lines, it's a boundary of my mind, and with simple rhymes, I try to move mankind. A constant river of rhyme is flowing inside me, and always high tide of guys that rises higher and higher from my soul, through my bones, into that pen that I hold. My stream of consciousness bubbles and overflows. A psychological bombardment transfer the lead hardness. My intellect pokes and prods in the go march park and see we are all. People pebbles tossed into a pool. Every ripple I create, internal ripple use. So in unison, we ripple in the type of ripple rhythm. But we need to ripple in a way that benefits our living. See, I'll do it again. We <laughs> are all, we are all people pebbles tossed into a pool. Every ripple I create, internal ripple use. So in and this is me rippling in type of ripple rhythm, but we need to ripple in a way that benefits our living. See, these words, this poetry is my release, my shield from all grief, my refuge to which I retreat when this world is too much for me. Phrases on pages, language my mind speaks, metaphors and similes, poetic elements, I just breathe. But the reality of this, the reality of the world is this, is that if I write a poem, that's only one poem. And if I write poems and write poems and write poems and never teach anybody to write poems, then the only poet will be me. But the exact same thing exists for you. If you do, if you write poems and make skits, or you teach, or you write, or you do those things, it's just you when you leave here. But if you invite the world to do those things that you do because you can teach them, you can teach them to save the Everglades, you can teach them to recycle, you can teach them to care about the environment, you can teach them, you can be the voice for the voices because the ospreys and the flamingos don't really have one right now. But you can do that if you decide to. And I thank you that today you decided to do that. Now, down here on this front table, I'm guessing are some books. And I would absolutely positively love for some of you to take some home today. So they're $10, but if you want a book, you just ask, okay? The reality of the situation is this, they're journals right there. I'd absolutely positively love to give you a journal to write your own poem, to continue to cultivate a culture that says we can save the environment, we can write about things like rivers of grass, amen? So this poem, I get some light right here, I'm gonna do this poem from here. Can y'all still see me? Yeah. This poem, this poem is called River of Grass. I hear whispers from the river of grass telling the sleeping manatee it's time to breathe. The flamingo, it's time to switch feet and the crocodiles and the alligators that though one skin is lighter than the other, there's no need for low self-esteem, prejudgment or feelings of, of inadequacy and if, even if the latter snout is round and instead of thin, they are invited into the harmony that exists between the red mangroves and the residents and its roots. 
the blades of saw grass that cut no creatures passing through in the frenzy of feathers and fauna that call the clash of habitats home. This is the Everglades, land of the Seminole and then the soldiers, the colonies and the colonized, the livings and the passers by, all trying to do what the Everglades do so well. Live in a balance like an egg on end, and if untouched, would stay that way with not so much of a problem or conflict because the mud and leaves, mosquitoes and trees are a living picture of monkey perfection that we keep trying to suburbanize and gentrify into something that would generate profits when anything man-made will definitely be of lesser value. The Everglades are out there, but what if we could get a little of the Everglades in here? because parrots and blue jays certainly speak different languages and frogs and toads certainly come from different backgrounds and the cattle egret and the snowy egret are the same species but different ethnicities and all of them seem not just to survive but to thrive in a place where we don't look hard enough to see the life inside. I hear the whispers from the river of grass telling Miami D to take a break and turn down Beyonce and Lil Wayne take a trip to the Everglades and listen to the crickets and the owls sing because we might find that our songs are not music at all. So thank y'all very much.